Hello. Hi, my name is Susie McCartney. I am studying to become an A certified personal trainer and I am having a hard time studying. So I have decided to make an audio book, even though I don't know how to make an audio file. Um, and I hope that, like me, it will help you to get through your ACE certified personal trainer content. I hope that I'm not violating any kind of copyright or whatever. I don't own it. I'm just need, I just need help studying. So without further ado, I am going to start with the first chapter of the essentials for exercise um, for fitness professionals. That's where I'm at right now. Um, later on, I'll go back to the uh, Certified Personal Trainer Manual. So, here we go. <clears throat> Chapter 1, Human Anatomy. The study of the human body has its origins in prehistoric times, making it one of the oldest known sciences. The term anatomy comes from the Greek word anatomy, which means dissection or to cut apart. Originally, anatomical understanding came largely from observations of dissected plants and animals. The proper understanding of a structure, however, must include knowledge of function in the living organism, i.e. physiology. Therefore, anatomy is almost inseparable from physiology, which is sometimes called functional anatomy. In this chapter, human anatomy is presented as the science of studying the body's structures and how these structures operate through various systems. The study of anatomy spans many disciplines, and finding consistency between disciplines is sometimes challenging. Therefore, readers might discover discrepancies between anatomy textbooks, such as the origin and insertion of the same muscle listed slightly different in two separate texts. This chapter presents essential anatomy concepts that are important for fitness professionals to know in order to perform their jobs effectively. The material offered here provides an excellent foundation for fitness professionals, but is not meant to be a detailed text for the vast study of anatomical science. To further their understanding of anatomy, fitness professionals may also want a study, to study a textbook devoted entirely to anatomy. Anatomical structures were originally named in Greek, Latin, and Arabic. With knowledge of the important anatomical, directional, and regional terms associated with the structures of the body, people often find that most tissues are named quite descriptively. A good example is the comparison between the biceps brachii and biceps femoris muscles. Biceps refers to two-headed muscle, therefore both muscles are composed of two heads. The location of each muscle, however, is different. The word brachii comes from the root term brachium, which means muscle of the arm, whereas the word femoris comes from femur, which is the large bone of the thigh. The biceps brachii is a muscle of the front upper arm and the biceps femoris is a muscle found in the back of the thigh. Table 1, Tac 2 provides a list of common anatomical terminology, which will help individuals decipher the root words and thus the meaning of bodily structures. Anatomical, directional, and regional terms. Anterior or ventral means toward the front. Posterior or dorsal means toward the back. Superior means toward the head. Inferior means away from the head. Medial toward the midline of the body. Lateral away from the midline of the body. Proximal toward the attached end of the limb. Origin 
of the structure or midline of the body. So it can mean toward the attached end of the limb, toward the origin of the structure, or toward the midline of the body. Distal means away from the attached end of the limb, away from the origin of the structure, or away from the midline of the body. Superficial is external, or located close to or on the body surface, and deep is internal, or located further beneath the body surface than the superficial structures. Cervical is a regional term referring to the neck. Thoracic is a regional term referring to the portion of the body between the neck and the abdomen, also known as the chest or thorax. Lumbar is a regional term referring to the portion of the back between the abdomen and the pelvis. Plantar, the sole or the bottom of the feet. Dorsal, the top surface of the feet and hands. Palmer, the anterior or ventral surface of the hands, anterior and ventral are um, interchangeable terms, I suppose. Sagittal plane, a longitudinal or imaginary line that divides the body or any of its parts into right and left sections. So this is the sagittal plane right here. The frontal plane is a longitudinal imaginary section that divides the body into anterior toward the front or ventral, or posterior toward the back or dorsal parts. The frontal plane lies at a right angle to the sagittal plane. So if I, if you were looking at the anatomical position, which is you know, standing up, well, you can't really see it, but if you look in figure one, tack one, um, um, the, I don't know what edition this is, the most current edition, um, and like you're standing like this, kind of scrunching it up. Okay, that was retarded. Anyway, <laughs> so sagittal plane here, and then my frontal plane would be going up the center of my arms, cut my head into um, anterior and posterior sections, you know, go all the way down the body like that. Um, and then the last plane that they talk about is the transverse plane. It's also known as the horizontal plane, an imaginary line that provides that divides the body or any of its parts into superior and inferior sections. So you can't see it, but where my kangaroo pocket is on the hoodie, um, if you were to draw a line just below that, kind of around the belly button, you would have superior toward the head and posterior away from the head parts or divisions of your body, and that would be the transverse plane, and things that happen along that plane are rotational, and there are some other movements there. Anyway, moving on. Um, let's just go over table one, tech one, or one, tech two real quick. Common anatomical medical terminology. All right. Uh, the root is ortho, the meaning is joint. The term we would find it in is arthritis or inflammation of a joint. Bi meaning two. Term biceps. Definition two headed muscle. Brachium. Arm is the meaning of the root word brachium. We would find it in brachialis. The definition of brachialis is muscle of the arm. Root. Cardio. Meaning of the root. Heart. Term we'd find it in cardiology. Definition of cardiology is the study of the heart. The root word cephalo is means head. We find it in the term cephalic and cephalic means pertaining to the head. Root word chondro means cartilage. We find it in the word chondroectomy. The definition of chondroectomy is excision of a cartilage. Root word costo meaning rib. We find it in the term costochondrial. The definition of costochondrial is pertaining to the ribs, pertaining to a rib and its cartilage. Root word dermo, meaning skin. We find the word dermo, the root word dermo, in dermatitis. 
and that definition is inflammation of the skin. In case you didn't know, itis means um, inflammation. Root word, hemo or hemat, uh, we, it means blood. We find that use of the root word in the term hemorrhage, and the definition of hemorrhage is internal or external bleeding. Emphasis on the hemo part of the word hemorrhage. Uh, root word ilio, its meaning is ilium. We find it in the term ilium. And the term ilium is defined as the wide upper part of the pelvic bone. Root, root word myo, um, meaning muscle. The term we find that in is myos, myositis, which means inflammation of the muscle. The root words to os and osteo means bone. Uh, the term um, we find it, it used in is osteomalacia. Its definition is softening of the bone. The root word pomo means lung. We find the term in pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery is defined as the vessel that brings blood to the lungs. Thoraco, meaning chest. We find it in the word thorax, which means chest. Tri is three. Uh, we find it in the word triceps, and that means a three-headed muscle. Age three. Naming the various parts of the human body required anatomic anatomists to develop a reference position so that the structures and areas of the body could be described in relation to each other. This anatomical position refers to a person standing erect with the head, eyes, and palms facing forward. The feet are together with the toes pointing forward and the arms are hanging by the sides. A representation of the an of anatomical position is given in figure 1 tac 1 along with the anatomical planes of motion. There are four structural levels in the body. Cells, tissues, organs, and systems. The most basic structures are the cells. They make up the tissues which are the next most complex level. Fitness professionals should gain a basic understanding of the structure and function of muscular, nervous, and connective tissues. In terms of complexity, the next level, next structural level in the body consists of organs. An organ is formed by two or more tissues combining to serve a specialized physiologic center for the body. The stomach, for example, is an organ lined with epithelial, epithelial tissue, a tissue that lines various body cavities, and its walls are formed by muscle tissue. Its specific physiological function is to prepare ingested food for digestion. At the highest structural level, the body is composed of systems, organs that function cooperatively and have a common purpose such as the digestion and absorption of food are said to be part of a body system. For instance, the mouth, esophagus, stomach, and intestines are all part of the digestive system. Fitness professionals should be familiar with the following systems, cardiovascular, respiratory, digestive, skeletal, nervous, muscular, and endocrine. Before I move on to the cardiovascular system, which is the next section, I will just let you know that um, there was a, an ACE um, Academy blog that said that <clears throat> chapter one of the Essentials for Exercise Science for Fitness Professionals um, you should be familiar with the um, with the systems of the body, which are the ones I just went over: cardiovascular, respiratory, digestive, skeletal, nervous, muscular, and endocrine. However, 
the things that um, we should know are, hang on, let me look it up real quick. The things that we should know for the exam, and of course, this exam, they don't, they don't give you the answers. It's not something you can not study for and pass well. All right, chapter, chapter one. Here's what, here's, if you want to write this down right now, it might be helpful. I think I'll do the same later. Chapter one, the most important aspects of this chapter are the anatomical position and the planes of motion, the segmental movements in the three planes. So remember the three planes are sagittal plane, frontal plane, and lateral, so sorry, transverse plane. Um, the segmental movements in the three planes, and the muscles and their actions. You need to understand how both the muscle spindle and the GTO, or the Golgi tendon organ function, as well as have a general understanding of the systems introduced in this chapter, cardiovascular, respiratory, digestive, skeletal, nervous, and muscular. You do not, however, oh, and by the way, cardiovascular and muscular in that list of needing to have a general understanding. Um, those two words are highlighted red. Um, you do not, however, need to be able to reproduce all of the information. Remember, this is a fitness training application based exam, not a science or anatomy exam. Quick tip. You do not need to know the origins, insertions, or blood or nerve supply of the muscles. You do need thorough knowledge of movement analysis, understanding how each contraction creates the movement, as well as the actions of the muscle. This will also come in more detail in Chapter 3. If you are a visual learner, this is a great time to view the ACE Essentials of Applied Anatomy and Kinesiology DVD. That is included inside the back cover of your Essentials book. Because this was my introductory um, video, um, I'm going to stop right here, and I will say that um, I don't know if this helps you, but I do know that when I have something audio to listen to while I'm doing other things, um, it really helps. Sometimes I just don't want to read, although I do like to, I do love reading, but Textbooks can be difficult to get through, especially when you feel isolated or whatever. It's not like there's a study group everywhere you go. Um, I do better with study groups in person. Um, anywho, this vid these videos um, I'm doing because, in a way, I feel like I have a study partner right here in front of me. And um, just being able to hear the audio version of... Um, a text, as well as being able to follow along visually, um, seems to help me. So that is why I'm doing this. And if you get annoyed with my voice, know that I do too. <laughs> so whatever. Um, hope it helps.